Hello everybody, welcome to my very first YouTube video. My name is Natasha. You might know me as Planted in Platinum on TikTok and Instagram. I'm very excited to be here today. I have been so excited to film a video. So today we are going to go through all of my plant purchases slash trades slash new plants of 2024 and i'm really excited to dive in and show you them there's some really exciting ones in there so let's just get started all right so we have got 24 plants and i'm excited to show all of them to you we're going to go in order from first purchase to most recent purchase of 2024. first up is this beautiful hoya colistophila black cat I have wanted one of these for quite some time now. As you can see why, they are stunning. This is a Hoya that boasts black variegation, and it is just, oh my God. Like with that limey green color of the Callistophila, it just makes it pop. Like this is such a beautiful Hoya. So this has been on my wish list for quite some time now, but very unattainable in Canada. I haven't even seen them pop up in the market until recently. So when I saw this on a Facebook purge on sale, let me tell you, I snagged that up so, so quickly. This is a one leaf cutting with no new growth yet, but it had amazing roots that came in perlite. And I left it in there for quite some time. And then I just recently transferred it into pond with no drainage. So I'm excited to see this grow. Hopefully, Hopefully I can show you a new leaf soon because, oh my God, that is just beautiful. All right, second purchase. This is an Anthurium Pappy X1. So this is another wish list plant of mine that I have wanted for a couple of years now. It's been on my list for a while. I haven't been able to come across one of these either. I don't know too much about this particular one, but I'm assuming since it's a big seedling, I think that this is a Pappy X1 X self, so a self plant. So we shall see how it pro progresses and matures. I'm really excited though, like this plant has some beautiful dark foliage and a new leaf, which is quite dark and so, so beautiful. I cannot wait until that hardens off. I wanna see how big it gets. I'm hoping that this plant will pop with the yellow sinus and um, venation at the top. We shall see. That would be my ultimate goal for this plant, but anthuriums take a while to show their true characteristics as they mature. So we could be waiting a little while for that, but poppies grow fast in my opinion. So maybe we'll be waiting not so long. Anyways, this came in uh, moss and perlite and it has beautiful, beautiful roots as you can see in there. I do need to repot this. I just got my tree fern in yesterday. So I'm gonna make a tree fern mixed with pond and perlite and my soilless aeroid mix, just like Alice from You Don't Even Grow Here. I'm really excited to try that mix because I usually just pot into pond or tree fern mixed with pond, but as the plant develops a substantial root system, it gets quite heavy and tree fern's also quite expensive, so. I think that that's my best bet. We'll I'll do some experimenting and see how it goes. But this is my Pappy X1. She's so cute. All right, next up, I did a group order with some friends and we went crazy and bought a whole bunch of seedlings, which I am not mad about because I love my Anthurium seedlings. Anthuriums are my favorite genus. And I've really just been getting into them quite a bit as I've as I'm more comfortable growing them. So I'm going to show you what we got. I got these from a private seller and she shipped them out and they arrived in quite good condition. So I was really excited to see that they arrived nicely. Remove a leaf there. 
So the first one here is a happy crossed with a forgetty eye. It is so, so dark and just beautiful. I am a pappy holic. I love my pappies so much. <laughs> and it has a fuzzy root, if you can see it there. So that's exciting. Oh, oh my goodness. So there's one in the bottom of the cup as well. So I think I'm going to repot this one quite soon and maybe, maybe try to acclimate it out of a dome. So when I first get my anthurium seedlings or seeds, I dome them just until their root system is pretty big. So you know what? What I'll probably do is I'll fill the top of this cup up with moss and perlite and just let it root into the cup more until it's at the bottom. And that way I can still dome it. Maybe I'll move it to a bigger cup and just let it work on its root system for a bit longer. I think that's what I'll do. But this is my Pappy Cross with the Forgetti Eye, and we're just hoping that she develops a peltate sinus. That would be amazing. For you who don't know what a peltate sinus is, it's when the sinus is fused, so it would be closed like a Forgetti Eye. So cross our fingers and toes, friends, because that will be one beautiful plant. Regardless if it has a peltate sinus or not. But if it has a peltate sinus, I think I might cry a little. So the next one was actually a seed. So we got sprouted seeds and luxuriums hybrids are my weakness. If you know me um, or see me post, you know that I am sucker for any luxuriums hybrids. So of course I had to get this and if you pollinate a luxuriums with a different plant and the lux is the parent plant, the lux takes a long time to get to producing berries. So it also does a lot of damage on your plant. It takes a lot of energy from the plant. So you'll have to um, really make sure that you're on top of watering and feeding and even then still you could really do some damage to your plant. So a lot of people choose not to have luxuriums as the pollen parent, but rather the pollen donor. But this is a luxuriums crossed with a dark crystallinum. So that means the luxuriums was the mother plant and the dark crystallinum was the pollen donor. So that is also really exciting. I only have one other um, hybrid with luxuriums as the parent, and that is my luxuriums with crystal mag and it's so beautiful I'll have to show you guys soon here but anyways this is my Lux crossed with dark crystal she's got a nice size leaf on her and it's pretty big actually so that's really exciting I can't wait till this size is up I actually might have to repot this one too because we've got her in pond and tree fern and do we see roots um, I don't see anything yet, but I'll leave her in here for a bit longer until I see roots and then I'll up-pot her a little bit so that she has more room. So that's really exciting. Another Luxurians hybrid to add to the collection. All right, so I got two of the next one, which is Dark Crystal crossed with a Pappy Fort Sherman. So I have two of these. I'll take them out of their domes and show you. Pappy Fort Sherman is such a beautiful pappy, like one of my favorites. They're so gorgeous. I'm really excited to grow these out. All right. I haven't opened these for quite some time, so I'm just going to do a little bit of root pruning or root leaf pruning here as I typically do. Okay, so we have one that is giving us a new leaf. You can see in there, so that's exciting. Yeah, they're still pretty young, so you can't really see the characteristics of the plant quite yet, but it will be fun to watch grow and I'll definitely keep you guys updated. I plan on doing a seedling tour one of these days. So keep 
your eyes peeled for that because it will be lots of fun. I have quite a few seedlings on the go here, like many of us on Therium addicts do. <laughs> These ones are just in moss and perlite. Oh, we have a root in the bottom of this one. So that's fun. It's hard to see. There we go. Right there. And then I don't see anything yet for this one, but this one's a bit smaller. So we'll just keep our eyes peeled for that. And the last one from the same seller was a freebie. She wanted to gift me a plant for um, doing the group order. And I thought that was so sweet of her. So she gifted me a Bessier Aff bench hybrid. So that is really exciting because one thing on my wish list this year is to obtain more Bessier Aff hybrids. I do really love the like oil slick sheen of that um, Bessier Aff emergent leaf on an anthurium, and I think it makes such a great hybrid. So when I saw this, I was pretty excited. A bench hybrid, if you don't know, is um, when the plant has been open pollinated by a different anthurium that has pollen on it in the same room. Or a um, bug, like a fungus gnat, or some type of flying insect could also carry pollen from one plant to the other plant and essentially pollinate it. Nature is so crazy. But this is my Bessier Aff Bench Hybrid. That's her newest leaf. Spilling stuff everywhere. That is her newest leaf, and she's super cute, super dark. I can definitely see the Bessier Aff in her. And she is in pawn, and she's got some roots going, so that is exciting. And that will conclude the last plant from that order. Next up is a Syngonium Pink Splash. This is actually a piece of my old plant. I used to have a Syngonium Pink Splash in my tent growing. It was so, so beautiful. And um, I sold it because it got too big. I needed space. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to sell this plant. And then after I sold it, I had seller's remorse. I was like, I want that plant back. So when my friend who I sold it to posted some cuttings for sale, you bet I picked one up. So this one might be hard to show you because it's in water. Maybe not. So she's quite pink, which is really exciting. I find these when you grow them in lower light, um, the dark, the green is way darker. So that is a little trick for you if you didn't know that. She's quite she's pushing a new leaf right in the middle there and she's got quite a few already so she's got a root i grew in water um, another one up here and this was her original root system that she came with she came in soil and i like to grow my syngoniums in pond and i'm a soilless household anyways so none of my plants are in soil unless they came to me like that and i just haven't transitioned them to something soilless yet but yes, I'm really excited to grow this one. This one, I find, spits out leaf after leaf. It grows pretty quickly for me. So we'll see how big we can get her. So exciting. And then my friend so kindly gifted me some plants when I went to visit her for her birthday. So first up, I'll show you the big dude. I wanted this back in my collection, and I just haven't found... A specimen that I liked yet and I went to her house and she asked me if I had a Burl Mark Sparagata and I said no I don't but I would love one and she gave me this one so kindly so that was literally so nice of her I'm so excited they're so pretty like there's just something about the green and yellow variegation that just pops I actually just potted her up she came to me with in moss and I I think two days ago now did a huge repot session and put her into my soilless aeroid mix and put her onto a moss pole so I'm really excited to see her climb I bet you'll be extending this pot sorry extending this pole in no time <laughs> these things grow like weeds but they're super pretty 
And then she gifted me one of my top wish list plants, but she won't be able to tell what it is because it's literally just in a cup here. It's a growth point in a cup. <laughs> so this is a Syngonium Chia Pence Variegated. I have wanted this plant for so long. It is such a beautiful Syngonium. So when she gave me this, I almost cried. I was so excited and I feel so grateful to have this plant in my collection. And I will definitely be updating you guys when this leaf decides to pop. Eee! Next up, she gifted me a variegated Raphidophora tetrasperma. Oh my God, it's so pretty. She actually gifted me one of these before and I killed it. I feel so bad. I don't know what it is with these things, but they're really hard for me to grow. The variegated one, I've had a couple now. So this will be my third one. Cross our fingers. I just have it in pond. It has a little root uh, about that long. You won't be able to see it because it's buried into the pond, but the variegation is super cute on this one. I don't want to pull it too. Okay, there we go. The variegation is super cute on this one, and I'm really hoping that it doesn't revert on me. Just pop in a new leaf, so that's exciting. But yes, this is my Rapidophora tetrasperma variegated. Next up, we have three plants that I purchased in a purge from a lady in Vancouver, which I'm really excited about. This one here is a philodendron heartleaf variegated. I don't have one of these in my collection yet. I did babysit one for quite some time, so I know that they grow pretty fast. But wow, look how pretty that is. So beautiful. I'm not much of a pothos person. I do like my epipremnums a lot, but to have a philodendron that's variegated that looks like a pothos, oh, so cute. I just love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one, if I'm going to get this one to climb or just let this trail. I haven't decided yet, but I put it into tree fern fiber with pawn, and it's already got a nice little chunky root there. You can see it. So that's exciting. I think this one's just going to take off. I probably will end up actually just putting like a bamboo stick and letting it climb right up the stick. I'm sure it won't attach to the stick, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So that's exciting. I've wanted that one for quite some time now. All right, so this is my philodendron bipenifolium violin variegated, which is so incredibly gorgeous. This one gives me variegated domesticum vibes, but they are a bit different. So I purchased this one in tree fern, it looks like mixed with perlite. So I haven't transferred her yet, but I do see some roots in there. I'm not sure if they're okay though. I'm gonna have to take this out and take a better look at the roots, but the leaf looks pretty healthy, so I'm not too worried about it. So this is Philodendron Bipenifolium Variegated. And from the same seller, and from the same seller, I purchased a Hoya Nova Ghost fresh cutting. So if you don't know, Hoya Nova Ghost is a silver Hoya that is actually a reverted Argentia princess, which is another one on my wish list. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. It hasn't rooted for me yet, but literally so silver. Oh my goodness. I am so excited for this to root up and grow. I love Hoyas. <laughs> so that's it for that seller. Next up, I did a trade. So I, I, I received seven plants from my friend and um, two of them are not with us any longer. One of them was a Hoya undulata. I literally took that plant out of the package, two leaves dropped right away, and then it just kept dropping leaves and then it was nothing. And I, I'm so sad because it was so beautiful, but you know what? It happens. <laughs> and then the other one was a Hoya VL9, which is really similar to the Hoya GPS 7420, I believe, or 7240, which is another one on my wish list that I really want. 
But yeah, unfortunately that one didn't make it after shipping either. But I do have five here to show you, which I'm really excited about. So this and my little cute cat planter, because <laughs> I need to go thrifting for some pots, is Hoya Waimania Cloudy Sky. Look how splashy that Hoya is. Like this is incredibly beautiful. Hoya Waimania is such a unique Hoya. It's got like the um, jagged edges, kind of like a Caudata Sumatra. It's just so interesting. Very interesting. But I wanted to add the Cloudy Sky to my collection because I do have the um, Hoya Waimanii from Borneo. And I really like that one. So I thought it would be fun to add another variety of Hoya Waimanii to my collection. And I'm really, really thrilled with my selection. I think that this is so beautiful. I just repotted this one as well. The roots were incredible. It came to me in perlite, so I have it now in a soilless aeroid mix. And I put it on a trellis. So I'll update you when that thing grows because I'm really excited about that one. Then I obtained a very long philodendron heterosium variegated, so the Hartley philodendron. Again, um, and I chopped it all up and put the whole thing into a little prop container. So I don't want to tilt it too much, but you can see all of the different little props in there. They're starting to root. I don't know what you can see there. And I just have um, some plastic wrap over top of it. No roots on the bottom yet, but I just did this not too long ago, so I'm not really expecting it to root super fast. But I do see some little aerial roots in there starting to form, so that's really exciting. Next up, I have Philodendron Felix. So this guy has been on my wish list um, for a couple years as well. The leaf shape and the um, texture of the leaf, the bumps are so interesting. So this plant came to me with, I think, three leaves. I could be wrong, but a couple of them dropped off, which is totally fine. I expect plants to drop leaves after they've been shipped. Um, I have her rooting in sphagnum moss. Oh my goodness, I think I see a root in there. It's gonna be so hard for you to see, but look, right there. How cool is that? I think that's a root. Um, yeah, so I just have her in my tent um, and she hasn't dropped her last leaf, so that's exciting. And I don't want to top any of this because she has little growth points on there and I want to see if any of them activate. I want this thing to root up really nicely and then I'll transfer her into a tree fern fiber mixed with pond and perlite um, substrate and I'll give her a moss pole and hopefully she just takes off. But I'm really excited because I've heard that this is a very challenging plant and um, I haven't killed her yet, so that's good, right? <laughs> Philodendron Felix, friends. Next up, we have Philodendron Eye Color. So this is really exciting. This is a Philodendron that has the red backs. They're such a beautiful plant. As the plant, matures the redness starts to fade off of the backs but you see this one has a very red midrib and even like the venation on the back here is red which is so so pretty i was going to remove this yellow leaf but it's not ready to come off yet so we'll just leave it on there yeah such a beautiful beautiful plant this one has done extremely well. She is also just rooting up in moss and perlite. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited because I haven't seen any roots on these yet, but I'm starting to see roots. Oh, it's going to be hard to show you because my light is right in front of me. And this leaf is in the way. Yeah, right, right there. So that's exciting. Oh my goodness, yay! Philodendron bicolor. 
The last plant that I obtained in that trade is Philodendron gladiifolium. So this is a really, really cool plant that has a wicked leaf shape, very similar to the golden dragon, but different in its own little ways. It came to me with these three leaves, I believe, and I think yeah, I think it was just three leaves and it's held on to all of them. And it is rooting in water and starting to root up. You see that? So that's really exciting. I'm going to put this one on a pole as soon as I get a good root system going to plant and then some aerial roots activated to put onto a pole. So I have it in, um, what is it like a seaweed supplement? just so that I can give some nutrients to the newly growing roots. And I really hope that it roots up fast for me because I want to see this baby climb. Like these leaves can get massive. So I'm really, really excited to show you guys updates on this baby once she hardens, once she roots up. Next up is another plant purchase. So this one's really exciting. It's another luxuriance hybrid, spoiler alert. <laughs> Um, this one came from a private seller who is an amazing breeder and I was really excited to snag this because he literally posted seven of them on the Anthariums Canada um, group and I was number seven. <laughs> I was like, me, 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 please. So I was really excited to actually collect one of these to add to my collection. Anthurium Zara Michelle from Tazula, but the hybrid is by Doc Block and it's crossed with Luxurians. So that's so, so exciting. I need to repot this. I got it in this little cup, but I didn't get it too long ago. So it'll be fine. It's got lots of good, healthy roots in there. And three beautiful, beautiful leaves. Four. There's a little tiny one in the back there, you see? <laughs> That's awesome. And some little grass growing in there. That means that it's pretty healthy substrate. <laughs> so that's exciting. Zara Michelle crossed with Luxurians. I am so excited for this one. So, wish list philodendron, which I have wanted to add and complete my collection. Actually, not complete because I still am missing one, which is the pink variegated philodendron micans. I have the um, regular green philodendron micans. I have the philodendron micans halo variegated. And now I have the philodendron micans yellow variegated, the Oria. And it is oh pretty i was really excited to purchase this and add it to my collection because yeah like i said i am on a variegated philodendron kick and i'm really excited to see how many i can add to my collection this year it's putting on a new leaf so i'm excited to see what that leaf looks like and it looks like it was propagated from a single green leaf so hopefully it doesn't revert on me which I don't think it will though, because this is so beautiful. Like the new variegation that's coming in is just, it's amazing. So we'll see how this progresses. I do want to put this on a circular trellis, just like my green micans. I think that it will fill out the trellis quite nicely. And I'm really excited to grow this one out. Philodendron micans variegated. Next up is a trade. This is Hoya Larissa. A stunning plant that has um, venation that comes through that you can see. And I do believe this one sun stresses. So this one I'm going to put into my Hoya tent eventually. That is my sun stress tent. <laughs> I'll show it to you guys one of these days. It's really hard though because it's like a really bright pink light. And um, it's really hard to film in there. I can't even take pictures barely because it's just pink. So I might have to... See if I can find like a white light to put in there just so that you can see the plants or take the plants out and show you them. But yeah, Hoya Larissa, she is beautiful. And last but not least, we have two Hoyas that I traded my friend for. 
They're in these little cups, and I'm really excited for these. So, so excited. So this one here is Hoya Golden Eye. Look how beautiful that plant is. That leaf is so, so gorgeous. I'm so excited to get this one rooted and growing because I really want to put it on a trellis and see what the new leaves look like. I'm really excited about this. This is a Hoya you don't come across very often or I've never really heard of. I had to Google it and see exactly what it was. She sent me a list of Hoyas to trade her for my Hoya Svetlana cutting. And yeah, I was like, what is Hoya Goldeneye? So I looked it up and I was like, I need that. I need it. <laughs> but my first choice was um, actually this Hoya Silver Lady because I'm a sucker for the silvery Hoyas. I'm a sucker. Love them so much. And this is one that's been on my radar. It wasn't on my wish list, which I don't know why it wasn't. But these are so, so, so pretty. I'm really excited to grow this. So Hoya Silver Lady and Hoya Goldeneye, which I traded for a Hoya Svetlana. We actually were just going to trade one, and then she asked me if I wanted another. So that was so sweet of her. So thank you for that, Epi. All right, guys, that that is a wrap. That is all of the new plants that I've added to my collection in 2024. I do have another box coming, and I'm really excited to show you guys that one when it gets here. Um, I was originally going to do a plant tour, a plant room tour for my first video and show you guys my newly set up plant room. It's always had plants in it, but I got a cabinet and I got a shelf and I rearranged everything and I just, I really love the way it turned out. But there is a lot of repotting that I need to do for spring and just like a, some things that I would like to take care of before I do a tour. So that one you guys can expect in the future. I'm not sure exactly when I'm gonna get around to it, but eventually, and I figured that it would be easier for me to film a simple sit down and talk video for my first um, YouTube video. Anyhow, I'm really, really grateful for all of you guys for showing up for me today and clicking on my video. Thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate that. Um, if you want to see more content from me in the future, please like this video, leave a comment, and hit the subscribe button and the little bell under there if you want to be notified for any of my future videos. I plan to do a video a week to start and then work my way up. So also, if you guys have anything that you want to see from my collection or any type of video that you'd like me to create, um, please leave it in down below. Uh, and I will do my best to get to it eventually. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good day.